For WeAreSC.com, I'm Angel Vizcarra, joined by Daryl Rudeau and Gary Pasquitz. Today, actually coming from the intramural fields here at Cromwell Field on the USC campus. Like we mentioned, when it gets darker earlier in the day, the games get much more important and a little colder. But anyways, we'll, we'll get started breaking down this matchup that USC has this week with Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium. Just saying that kind of gives me the chills, Gary. But really quickly, let's talk a little bit about what we heard from Clay Helton today. He immediately opened up by addressing Porter Gustin and the tough news about his injury. What, what were your thoughts on what Helton had to say? Uh, it, it's just a tough situation all the way around, as you mentioned, Angel. You, you feel for Porter losing it, but you also feel for this USC team. Uh, this is a guy that was our sack guy this year. He was an emotional leader. He had definitely developed into that role. And Clay Helton called him the superhero of the team, said he was our Thor. And so that's that's a big loss no matter how you look at it, but especially when you're going against a physical team like Utah. All right, Daryl, anything else stick out to you today from Helen's Presser? Well, to, to echo Gary's uh, point on losing Porter Gustin, if you talk about him being Thor, I remember watching the Avengers without <laughs> Thor against Thanos, and Utah's kind of felt like Thanos uh, for USC as of late. Yeah. But what's really stood out to me about uh, some of um um, coaches, Coach Helton's comments were, he, he talked about how the offense as of late have been taking what the defense gives you. Well, that, that's a fine balance, you know, Angel and Gary, when you talk about taking what the defense gives you because a defense can lure you to sleep, get you to become one dimensional, but when you're on the road, balance is very important and a running game becomes a quarterback's best friend on the road it does a lot of things it demoralizes your opponent and it also will silence the crowd and allow you to control the tempo all right and let's dig a little bit into this utah matchup this week if anyone of you remember last year's game against utah at the coliseum it was an absolute thriller with usc winning 28 to 27 after trailing by something like 14 points at the half but gary looking at this week's matchup looking at what utah does offensively anything stick out uh, they are physical and they run the footballs. Not only Zach Moss, who we have seen before and who has had success against the Trojans, but also their quarterback Tyler Huntley really adds an element of running the football. Again, not having Porter Augustin to help set that edge is something that I think we're all paying attention to without a doubt. But you know when you play Utah, you're going to get a big physical offensive line and you're going to get that running game. That's what they bring. All right, Utah team coming off of two really convincing victories, one against a then top 10 ranked Stanford team, and last week 42 to 10, they defeated Arizona. Daryl, how important is this game just holistically for the Trojans? Well, when you think about if USC's goal is to win the Pac-12 South, it now feel like it goes through Utah. And this is a place, as I mentioned before, they haven't had a lot of success. I think, If I recall, the last time that they've won was 2012. Well, last I remember, there was a Matt Barkley on, on this team. And it, it took an outer body experience to win there then. So if USC is going to summon those demons and keep their Pac-12 champion hopes alive, they are going to have to play play sound football and really kind of build off of the game plan that they had against Colorado. I thought that they came in with the right approach, but replacing Porter Gustin is going to have to be by committee if you're going to get more production out of all 11 guys on defense. All right, Gary, we'll wrap up by asking you, you being a guy who's covered this team as long as anyone I think I know, uh, Rice Eccles just feels like a tough place for this team constantly. Is it just one of those places the Trojans have a tough time? It is, and I'm really going to give a lot of credit to Utah for the way that they've raised their game since they entered the Pac-12 conference. They were a good WAC team, and they came to the Pac-12 and be, have become a good Pac-12 team in a short amount of time. And yes, that includes the Trojans. Every time we go up there, it seems to be a tough matchup. So finding who we get to replace Porter Gustin is going to be key, uh, I think, and then whether or not we get Cam Smith back. And if you get if you don't get Cam Cam Smith back? Do you get Palaie now Oteote back? A lot of questions around in that front seven for the Trojans right now. Any last comments, Daryl? Right, and, and look for USC to kind of build off of the success that they had, but on the road is a little tricky, and so physicality will factor into this game, which means that you are going to have to rely on a running game, so make sure you pack your big pads and you don't forget the running game this week. All right, that'll do it here for us from Cromwell Field. The Trojans, the Pac-12 South leading Trojans, will look to stay in the lead in their division with a big matchup this weekend in Utah. For WeAreSC.com, I'm Angel Vizcarra, joined by Daryl Rudeau and Gary Pasquitz. You're watching We Are SC.